Jesus of our Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Evangelists and ministers, your $25 for your license is due today. Money for the council dues, 18 and older, is $2 per person. And the under the age of 18 is a dollar a person. Tuesday, June the 13th, the pastor will meet with the ministers and evangelists at 530. Tuesday, also June the 13th, your money is due for pastor for Father's Day. We're asking for $20. Give your money to Evangelist Birch. Thursday, June the 15th, the street meeting will be at Cleaver Court at 7 p.m. Friday, June the 16th, we will have a guest speaker. Sunday, June the 18th is Father's Day. There will be no evening service. Monday, June the 19th, we'll meet with all the Sunday school teachers and whoever wants to work vacation Bible school at 530. Thursday, June the 22nd is a street meeting at Rosemont Village. It's going to be at Cornelia Bell's house. Tuesday, June the 27th, the pastor will meet with the deacons and deaconess at 530. Thursday, June the 29th, the street meeting will be at Howard Avenue at Sister Barbara Porter's house at 7 o'clock. Friday, June the 30th, the young people will be selling after the service, hamburger and cheeseburger combos includes chips and drink for $7. Saturday, July the 1st, the pastor preaches at Extension Ministry. That's Pastor Peter's church. The service starts at 3 o'clock. Dinner's going to be started at 1 we will meet here at 10.30 and leave at 10.45. So just remember each and every one of these announcements to give me a support. Ask everyone to stand as we bring forth the pastor. Let's receive him with a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You all may be seated. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Reach over and tell somebody good to see you. Good, good to see, see you. you. Shake their hands. Shake their hands. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake. shake their hands. Not the devil's name, no. We're going to shake this hand. Appreciate you all. Thank God for you being here this morning. Thank God that we all are here this morning. That's because the Lord. Now, is there any updates on them babies that was in that car wreck? Anyone ever heard anything else about it? Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What about the others? Anybody heard anything about the Kevin's son? Huh? In how many? Really? Wow. This Thursday, we're going to be praying. That's a tremendous hit them babies too. Y'all know they blessed to be alive. Nobody but God. I seen the car and the truck. God Almighty. I tell people this all the time. You can be the best to drive. But one glimpse down, one look away, it can do some damage. But just thank God that no one was killed. Thank God for mercy. When you said they were hurt, you can recover from a hurt. But you can't recover if you're gone. But thank God for mercy. And I always, I always remember this. That's not matter whether they belong here or not. That's somebody's child. It's somebody's child. It could have been, it could have been yours or mine, or it could have been us ourselves. So don't, don't, don't be so cold towards people, especially when it comes to these kids. Cause Satan, if he was left up to the devil, he would have killed them. He would have killed them. <laughs> He would have killed him, but God bless him to be alive. Appreciate you all. Appreciate you all. Ella Porter called me this morning, and I spoke with him. Uh, he's doing wonderful, and uh, I did have to have a hip surgery. Uh, it ain't slowed him down, though. Uh -uh. He called me this morning and said, man, you know when I asked you to uh, 
help me to find them scriptures? I said, yeah. He said, man, I'm telling you right now, I'm back preaching. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand, praise. He said, I'm, I said, man, that's good news for me. That's good news for man, for real. That's good news. Because the devil tried to kill that boy. Yeah, he's, he, he, he's preaching. I said, don't you worry with me. I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to give him about 30 minutes. I ain't going to let him show off. I, I know it. I'm, I'm going to tell him. I'm going to give you about 30. He'll get down here and try to run and jump. I said, we ain't doing that. I know, I, I know I'm know like a book. So I told him, I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to give him a sister Martin. We're going to set it up for him one. This is sometime before the summer play. Give about 30, 35 minutes. And, and then pull this coat like the other one do. Come, come on. Come on. Come on. I'll be up here talking. I hear something. That's that. Oh, you got me. Yeah. Man. Love, listen to the man this to me. Man this to me. I wasn't preaching. I was just making a comment. Boom. He don't want you, if you go too long on the comment, this is what I want to teach. It, 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 it's called teaching. Right, right, right. He didn't do the hurt me. Right. Throw it off. And this is what I'm trying to teach people. Do what they ask you to do. You never know, ever the ice. They guess you that. They told you to read scripture. You up there jumping off the pool pit. You can't surf. You just gotta use your conversation. Yeah, I heard something say. I didn't hear that. I felt right. I said, uh oh. But well, we appreciate you all. But keep him in your prayers. He's doing good. God has blessed him. And I appreciate you all. Not going to hold you long. If we do have what we call evening service at five. So come on back out while the sun is shining. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. Go home and get you something cold to drink. You know, and something to eat. <laughs> Peaches, you asleep through a tornado. Hurricane. Then, 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 all that bulletin. Everybody wake up and she's still asleep. Hurricane coming. Step by step. Where about that? Then, then, what? I can't reach mama or daddy. No, honey, you ain't gonna reach us. They said the hurricane. It was God saying, get out of there. So I left. You want to sleep? All right, in the book of Exodus, not gonna hold you long. First chapter. What God has put on my heart. Give people that. <coughs> Appreciate every one of y'all being here today. Thank God for you. Good to see you. Look at what Nelly said. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to take him girls out of the day. I'm going to make sure I leave that map this home. Take them with me. I'm going to bring them with me today. I'm going to make sure she get a problem. Thank you, Devin. I told her when she gets a husband, I'm going to sit down and have a talk with her. She's going to eat some good vegetables, <laughs> green food, and corn, and all that kind of stuff. And, 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 and we, ain't, we ain't no vegetarians here. And we, we certainly ain't no sweet turkey. <laughs> Let us stand for the honor of God. Exodus. The book of Exodus going out of Egypt. This is what this book represents, Exodus out of Egypt. <laughs> Egypt. Exodus 1, verse 1. Now these are the names. Wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Hold up a minute. The third chapter, man. I didn't think that was right. These are the names. Exodus, the third chapter, I'm sorry. Verse 1. Now Moses kept. The flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. And the, and the bush was not consumed. 
And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burnt. And when, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, but put off thy shoes from thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. You may be seen. I want to use a thought that God brought to the prophet. Here's my thought. A visitation from God. A visitation from God. And I'm going to use a subtopic. Tell somebody, it's time. It's time. It's time. Yes, yeah. The story of the great prophet Moses. Moses was born into bondage, into Egypt. Sephora, people of Egypt was, people of Israel was taken into bondage. God told Abraham that his children will be in a strange land and in bondage for 400 to 430 years. Well, they are down into Egypt. Jacob goes down into Egypt with his 12 sons. Jacob dies in Egypt at 140 years of age. Jacob says to Joseph, Joseph was there. Jacob died with his eyes open. Joseph shut the eyes of his father. They in Egypt. Canaan is nearly two to 500 miles from Israel. When I was in, in Tel Aviv, Israel, I wanted to know how far we were from Egypt. Egypt is between two and 400 miles from Israel to Egypt. Israel and Egypt are both in Africa. They call it the Middle East, but it's on the continent of Africa. So now Jacob has died. Jacob tells Joseph, do not bury me in Egypt. Because Egypt represents bondage, slavery. Take me back to Canaan. Now they can't travel with him because of his body being decayed. They're in the east. It's hot. It's human. So now embalming embalm did not start in America. They embalmed Joseph's father in Egypt. Dies out. The 
Egyptian says, let us bring them into slavery, into bondage. So Moses is born a slave. He's not born a free man. He's born a slave in Egypt. God now is getting ready to bring the people out of slavery. So slavery just didn't start in the 1600s, the 1400s, the 1300s. No, slavery's been going on for nearly four to five thousand years. They are in slavery in Egypt. Almost three million people are in slavery in Egypt. Now Moses is born. Pharaoh has given the command that every male child, every boy child that is born must be cast to the alligators. They were feeding the alligators human babies. Why were they targeting the human race? Why were they targeting the male? Without a male, you cannot produce. Without a male, there is no heir. So the devil was trying to genocide, trying to wipe out the Hebrew people. He was trying to wipe out the Israelite people. So every male was cast to the alligator. Soon as he came out of the mother's womb, if they found that you had a little boy, they would come and get your little boy and cast him into the lake where the alligators could eat him up. Moses, his mother and father, they hired him for three to six months. When they found out that they could not hide Moses anymore, they said, well, the Lord gave them wisdom, said to make a best net. Go down to the Nile where Pharaoh's daughter would be at the Nile. And she would go down to the Nile to bathe herself. And while she's down to the Nile, I will put the baby into the nest. Let the baby go down the Nile while Aaron, his sister, is where, or watching him. Mary and his sister, I mean, is watching him. So while they're down at the Nile, Moses is put in a basket to go down the Nile. Pharaoh's daughter is bathing herself. And, the, and one of the servants said, there is a basket over there. And Pharaoh's daughter said, go and fetch the basket. When they fetched the basket and brought the basket, to Pharaoh's daughter, it was a little baby Moses was in that basket. And the Bible said, and the baby wept. And God touched the heart of Pharaoh's daughter to say, I will not kill this baby. Though my father has given the command for this baby to die, I will have compassion on this baby. Then little Marion stepped up and said, would you want me to go get one of the midwives to be able to raise this baby? She said, yes. And the Bible said she went and got Moses' mother. Sometimes you gotta let him loose in order to get him back. So she went down there and got Moses' mother. Why did God let him loose and then bring him back? Because he wanted Moses to understand where he's going to come from. He wanted Moses to understand he was born in slavery. He was a prison a prisoner in Egypt and I'm going to use this baby boy to bring deliverance to the nations of Israel so Moses grows up in the palace of Pharaoh but yet his mother is the one who's going to tend to him she's his nanny she's his nurse why was it important for his mother to be his nanny and Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter did not know that this was his biological mother she didn't know but I'm telling you somebody knew his name is God the Lord knew that that was his mother so now God is going to give him not only the education of Egypt but God going to teach him and educate him for where he comes from how many people you know are ashamed for where they come from don't want to talk about what they grew up what, what, who they used to hang around with. Shame that they were brought up in the bottom. Shame that they were brought up across the railroad tracks. Shame that they were brought up in the projects. 
Can I get a witness in here? Yeah. But the Bible uh, got Moses right where he wanted him to be. Uh, so Pharaoh's daughter raises Moses. Uh, Moses uh, is educated, uh, is schooled uh, in the Egyptian school. Uh, he's well educated. Uh, he's well rehearsed. Uh, he's he, He's a, he's a very smart man, a very intellectual man. Not only that, but Moses is a general in Pharaoh's army. He went out and fought the battles of Pharaoh. He was a conqueror. He was a champion. He was a warrior. But he don't understand who he really is. So one day, while he was out, he seen uh, he's seen a, he seen an Egyptian uh, getting ready to take a whip uh, and smite uh, one of his brethren. Uh, and the Bible said he looked left uh, and he looked right. Uh, he didn't see nobody. Uh, he killed uh, the Egyptian uh, and hid him uh, in the sand. Uh, and then the next day, mother, uh, he went out. Uh, he seen two brethren. Uh, and strolling uh, with one another. Uh, and Moses said, uh, why are you all uh, and strolling with one another? Uh, don't you know uh, you are brethren? Uh, and then one of the men thrust his brother to the side uh, and said, now uh, will you kill me uh, like you kill uh, the Egyptian? Uh, and Moses said, well, surely uh, they know uh, that I have killed this man. Now, so he flees Egypt now, and goes down into a place now, called Midian. Now, he's down in Midian. Now, while he's entering to Midian, now, he finds uh, he finds some women. Now, Jephro uh, got seven daughters, uh, not seven sons, uh, but seven daughters. Uh, it was the women's job in the Bible uh, to go fetch water uh, for the family. Uh, and for the cattle. Uh, uh, some of you women won't do it with you. Uh, yes, you would. Uh, if you back in them days, uh, get your pot, uh, get down to that creek, uh, and bring me my water. Uh, can I get an amen in here? Uh, mm -hmm. So they're down there uh, at the well. Uh, while they're at the well, uh, another man uh, would not let them get water. Uh, but Moses stepped up and told that man, leave them alone. And give them water. So they go back home to their father. Jephro. Jephro says, How is it that you so soon come from water the sheep? He said there was a man there who helped us to get some water. Jephro said, Why didn't you invite him to the house to drink water and to eat bread? So they go back down to the river. And they bring Moses up, and he meets Jephro. He's there with Jephro for many years, and Jephro gives him his older daughter by the name of Zipporah, and he has two sons. I think Ephraim and Manasseh. He has two boys. Now Moses fled Egypt when he was forty years old. Now forty years has passed. He's eighty years. Down in Midian. Now he's in Midian where it's humid, where it's hot, where the sun will cause you to have a sunstroke, a heat stroke. One day when Moses was out keeping the sheep, he looked over, he seen a tree, a bush burning. It was unusual for a bush to catch a fire when in the Middle East. And in the first bush, uh, he seemed burning. Uh, but what caught his attention? Uh, that while the bush was burning, uh, it never consumed. Uh, it never withered up. Uh, and Moses said, uh, this is awful strange. Uh, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Uh, how many know God can get your attention? Uh, God knows how to get uh, your attention. Uh, so Moses. 
He knows your first name. He knows your middle name. And he knows your last name. Moses. Moses. Moses said, Where am I? He said, Moses, draw not nigh. Take off. Take off. Take off. Take off your shoes. Why does Moses have to take off the shoes? A type of submission. A type of obedience. If they're not only that, but a servant did not wear sandals. A servant did not wear shoes. Take off your shoes for the place that you stand in is holy ground. And then God now getting ready to give him a visitation, a manifestation, and a revelation. He said, Moses, I am not was. I told Moses to tell the people to fast for two days. 
And on the third day, I'm going to come and see. You can find this in the book of Numbers. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, Exodus. Not this week, but it's coming. Get your, get your chicken in. Get your rooster in. Get your hot pockets in. Whatever you like to eat. We're going to fast. And I tell you, he's speaking to me as I'm standing here. He just said, Yahweh has heard us. He's heard us. And read on down, he said, I have surely seen and heard the affliction of my people in Egypt. God, God is saying, I see what you're going through. I heard your cry. I seen your tears. And then I'm coming to see you. I'm coming to see you. Now this is a, from the pulpit to the usher boy. Don't you think you don't need to straighten up some things before God get there? How many know you don't just let everybody in your house when it ain't cleaned up? Am I telling the truth? Well, you can't listen. God, God got to be able to come to your house. Here's your house. Your heart is your house. Right here. I ain't talking about that, where you live at on, 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 on what street you live on. Your house is here. He wants to come to you. He's coming. He said he's going to give us a visitation. And listen, I got to figure out how he wants it. But he just said I want corporate prayer. He just told me that. I want corporate. What is corporate? Together prayer. I want together prayer. I want together prayer. He'll tell me how to do it. When to do it. Don't give me no suggestions. Because you didn't give me the prayer. He did. Now if he sent you to me, I accept that. But then you come to me on your own, I think we're out of heaven at 9 o'clock at night. I'm going to continue. I'm turn you around and say, go back home. You got to have where people can come. Corporate means more than us. It means the whole congregation. He wants corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. Corporate prayer. Because he wants to bless us together. Together. He's coming, y'all. It's time. It's time for a visitation now. I got some things that, I, that only God can do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Only God can do this. Stay your butt. Come on down here. You want to get line, prayer lines open? You come and go first. Come on, let Pastor pray for you first. Let him, let him push you down the line. Come on. I'm going to pray for you myself. I'm going to pray for the babies. And listen, what's the problem? What's the problem? They ain't letting you do it for me. Birds do it. Okay. Birds bought you. He bought you. Okay. I'm going to take care of that. And you want to look back at no more. Where is he at? Is that the man? Is that the man? Okay. Point at him so Pepe know where he's at. Okay, I got you. Father, in the name of Jesus, watch over him. Prepare him for your visitation as well. Jesus. Visitation. Get your minds on.
down from verse 3 to verse 10 to show you that I'm in the book. This is Bible. This is Bible. What God is declaring to tell me. And Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto Moses unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall thou say unto the house of Jacob, Tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I have done unto the Egyptians, and how I burned you on eagle wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice, indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all the people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their face all these words which the Lord had commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify the people today and tomorrow. That's a two-day fast right there. Today and tomorrow. And the third day, and, uh, and wash their clothes. That's top. The washing of the clothes is the putting off the things that's not like God. That's what that represents. Putting things off that you know you should be doing, saying, watching, going, participating in, put it off. Backbiting, judging, fault finding, put it off. It's a type of clothing. Put it off. Pornography, put it off. Put it off. And this what else he said. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come unto the, come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to thyself. And ye shall go up unto the mountain, nor touch it, nor the border of it. Whosoever touch it shall, be, shall, be, shall surely die. And this is what else he says right here. Verse 15. And he said unto to the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. No time of intimacy at this time. This is God's time. Render the season what is season. To God what is God. And this is what else is saying. Hold up. Slow down. And it came to pass on the third day that there was thunder and lightning and a thick cloud upon the mountain and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud that all the people in the camp trembled. And Moses, here's what I want to get to. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. He wants to give us a visitation. But before he can, we can meet, before I can bring you up to meet with God, you got to be clean. You got to be clean. He wants to visit this church. And I'll be God if I let anybody stop that visitation. You're not stopping this visitation. Oh, no, you're not. It's time for it. He wants to talk to us. He wants to give you a visitation, a manifestation, and a revelation. Visitation is coming into the bush. That's the visitation. The manifestation, when he put his hand in it and he brought it back out and he snapped it. The, the revelation is to tell you some things. Yes. And I'll be gone. I've been fasting and praying for this. And I will not let nobody Thank miss you. call me to miss you. Right. Right. So you prepare yourself. Yeah. I'll let you know when. Because it's coming. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Yeah.